Texas had a spring game yesterday. There are a lot of names that popped off your screen. You know, quarterback is obviously the, the focal point. That's where the microscope was focused yesterday. And uh, Sark ended up announcing Quinn Ewers is going to be our starting quarterback, or I think his exact words were, it's pretty obvious. Quinn is our number one quarterback right now. So predictably, my DMs were a disaster afterwards. Uh, Not by the people who listen to what I say, more so by the people who don't hear what I say. About two weeks ago, actually it probably would have been about a month ago, Sark came out and said, we have a quarterback competition. And a lot of people said, no, you don't. Quinn Ewers is going to be your starter. And I came on this show, and my exact thought was, it doesn't matter whether Quinn Ewers ends up being his starter. The competition's not over when the starter is named. This goes for any position. So then I had some people come at me and say, no, that makes no sense. Once you announce a starter, that by the very definition of the announcement is the end of the competition, which I understand is kind of semantics. What you're talking about is a competition in terms of competing for the job. I'm talking about a culture of competition. So I don't, in other words, think Quinn Ewers comes to practice if they had one tomorrow and just sits on the bench because he's not competing for the job anymore. So competition is always supposed to be happening. But if you're watching on YouTube, there are three faces on your screen right now. Quinn Ewers is there. Arch Manning is there. Then there's this guy named Malik Murphy. Malik Murphy can throw the ball about, I'd say, 450-some-odd yards in the air. Not on the moon, either, right here on Earth. He opened some people's eyes yesterday. I don't just think in Austin, Texas. I think if you probably check his most recent followers on on the socials, you'll find staffers from all different sorts of schools following him. Now, I am not suggesting that anyone would ever preemptively try and tamper with anyone's roster out there for a position like quarterback. I'm not suggesting that, except that I am. So Malik Murphy shined yesterday, and while I don't think he's going to insert his name into the starting rotation this year, that's a deep quarterback room. And I don't know why people doubted me about the wide receiver room either, but if you watched their spring game yesterday, I don't know how you can take away anything other than Texas has one of the best receiver rooms in the country. You get an Xavier Worthy back, and then you get Isaiah Nair, You didn't get to see him on display last year. We get A.D. Mitchell had a great one-handed touchdown catch yesterday. We didn't get to see him. We've never gotten to see him at Texas. Whittington's back for his 14th year of eligibility. And then we've also got guys like Jontae Cook, just true freshmen. We're just adding five-star guys in there. I combine that with presumably a healthy Quinn Ewers with a year two firm grasp of a Steve Sarkeesian offense. And you don't think that's going to be a dangerous receiving room and a dangerous passing game? They could go 8-4 and four with it. They could go 12-0 and 0 with it. It's not a guarantee of record, guys. I'm just telling you that's one of the best receiver rooms in the country. But there's this thing about Texas where if you make any kind of definitive statement, there's no nuance allowed. You know, there's, there's no tact. There's no relativity. I'll talk about that in a second. But they lost Bijan Robinson, maybe the best running back in the country. Lost Roshan Johnson. Really good one-two combo there. So you would think... Well, that means they're weak at running back, right? And it's an, actually an extremely impressive running back room. Jonathan Brooks was out, and he's going to be heavily involved in their rotation. But Jaden Blue popped off the screen to me. He's a guy who skipped his senior year of high school. And I think maybe, I think a lot of people sort of, I won't say forgot about him. I think some people kind of started to push him a little bit to the back burner. No longer. Uh, Savion Red looked good. Cedric Baxter is, is the top running back in the country coming in this cycle. Keelan Robinson didn't play yesterday. He's still in that mix. They're really deep there. They're really versatile, too. It's not four of the same guys. So Texas offensively, it probably is not a shock to you, going to be really formidable again this year. But like I said, I know how it works with Texas. I've been around this team. I, I've been burned by our model. Because the model believes in Texas, as I have told you many times. The model would look at Texas and say, yeah, Kansas City won the Super Bowl, but they haven't played Texas. The model gets drunk on Texas. I'm not going that far. What I'm saying is, as always, just because you haven't done something doesn't mean you can't do it. So Sark hasn't won the Big 12. Okay, it doesn't mean he can't do it. You can never say you think Texas is going to be pretty good. You've either got to say they're going to win the Big 12 or they're missing a bowl game because anything in between 
is just going to get sucked one direction or the other immunity. And, and you will have your, your comments grossly miscontextualized. And I'm trying to be that person. I'm trying to tell you, I think Texas is going to be improved over last year where they were improved over the year before. I think the offense's top-end potential is elite. Elite. Don't use that word very often with them. Elite. Defensively, that will ultimately be, as it has been so far, what decides how far they can go. Texas, it just wouldn't be the biggest shock to me in the world if they did win the Big 12. It wouldn't be the biggest shock to me in the world, therefore, if they found themselves in the playoff conversation. I'm just speaking in pencil for a reason, because I'm not totally sold on it. That's what spring is for. You don't have to make definitive judgments this early, but I think they're, they're headed in the right direction. There you go. So that is a tactful take on Texas, and therefore it won't be accepted by the masses.